Hey, 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 it's Wednesday, which means it's time for another triple A Ask Alyssa Anything session where I'm responding to questions you left in the comments about the publishing industry, querying, how to get your book published, and just how to strengthen your story overall. These questions allow me to tackle subjects that I might not have otherwise known were on your minds when I'm putting together my other weekly videos, so I've really been enjoying them and I hope you are too. If you are new to this community or you have been here before but haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I promise you won't regret it. We are an amazing, inclusive community of writers and would love to have you around. While you're down there, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button because it helps my videos reach more viewers and grow this amazing community. If you do currently have a work in progress, I recommend hopping into the description before you forget and downloading my free story self-assessment worksheet. This is a resource I designed especially for my YouTube community who are working on a novel because I wanted to give you something to help you identify potentially weak areas in your work. I know that can be so hard to do when you are in the thick of it. And hopefully this helps illuminate some things for you so you can return to your draft with a fresh perspective. Downloading that is going to sign you up for my newsletter where I publish exclusive interviews with publishing industry professionals and published authors. So you don't wanna miss out on all the amazing insights they are providing as well. If you wanna go straight to the newsletter, the link is also in the description. We have some great questions on deck today, so let's dive in. First question here, I was wondering about query letters. I'm so used to writing in past tense for my novel that it's kind of confusing Using to write a description slash synopsis in present. Does it matter which tense such things are written in? So even though your book is written in past tense, you want the blurb, which is the description of the plot that you include in your query letter, and your synopsis to be written in present tense. Remember that these are not supposed to mirror necessarily the style of your novel or the tense of your novel. They are basically marketing or pitching materials that you are using to communicate your story to the agent and in the case of the blurb, eventually to the reader. So for that reason, you will definitely want them to be in present tense because these documents have a very specific style and you want to make sure that yours is adhering to that. What I recommend doing is finding a sample synopsis or finding a sample blurb. You can find any blurb online basically just by looking up a book that you like or better yet, a book that is similar to yours and then looking at the description of that one and modeling yours after it. Even if it feels a little bit awkward at first, definitely try it out and I think you will get used to hearing how the synopsis and the blurb should sound. From a more practical perspective, having the synopsis in present tense actually serves to designate to the agent what events are happening in the main narrative, aka what is happening in real time as the scenes are progressing, versus what is delivered as backstory or flashback because you will recount the main events in present tense and then any backstory or flashback in past tense. Here's the next question. Are you familiar enough with the young adult space to speak on the inclusion of adult language in a manuscript? It doesn't seem as though there's an across the board expectation for the amount of cursing in published books as there is say for films and how they're rated. Is there an amount of cursing in a YA manuscript that would turn off an agent or editor? Are there unspoken rules regarding how much language can be included? I wonder if anything is considered particularly taboo or unappealing. What if it's in a character's nature to speak a certain way? I imagine when the sort of language is included, it's done with great care and thought. It seems the language used in TV film for young adults can be quite different than in published books. When it comes to deciding whether to use profanity in your YA book or how much to include, I would return to what makes sense for this character and what is realistic for this character. If it would be doing that character an injustice to make their language prim and proper and not use expletives when they would feel compelled to and when the situation would call for it, then you should include the language. For instance, it's possible that you're including a insult that one character says to another and it's a source of bullying and that is critical to the plot. In that case, you would want to use the language that the character uses and show it in the manuscript. 
and that wouldn't turn off a literary agent or a publisher because they understand that the language is necessary to the story. When it could get dicey is if you are throwing around expletives really for no reason and therefore it becomes jarring because it is making the reader feel uncomfortable and ultimately disengage with the character. That said, there is no one-size-fits-all rule for this. It really depends from story to story what makes sense for that story. There are YA books published with no profanity, right? Others will have some. So I would say to return to your story and what makes sense for your characters. Here's an interesting question. When an author publishes traditionally, are they able to include a playlist for their book? And if yes, then what is the max amount of songs allowed? When I worked in traditional publishing, I never saw a situation in which a playlist was included with the publication of the book, but that could be an interesting element to discuss with your publisher. It's not necessarily something that you would need to have ready at the querying stage especially, or even something you would need to incorporate in your manuscript itself. But when it comes time to publish the book, perhaps you include a playlist on your author website or something like that. But your literary agent and your publisher would definitely have ideas on what makes the most sense. If your book has a musical element or is about a band or is taking place in a specific time period and music is very important to the characters, I could see that being interesting. If it's more of a mood playlist that inspired you as you were writing, then maybe it won't be particularly compelling for readers. But again, it's a creative idea that's worth discussing with your publishing team. All right, we have time for one more question today. I was curious if entering manuscript in contests are actually worth it, or if querying an agent you really want first is the best move. Are there pros and cons to either approach? How do you know what writing contests aren't a scam? Haven't queried any agents yet or finished a manuscript, but it's in progress. Currently working on an adult dark fantasy slash high fantasy. I would love for it to be a series, but a lot of things have said that probably isn't wise, but I'm stubborn. And a strong self-editor, so worth a shot. Definitely have a very strong, captivating beginning, conflict, and tension from the start, but also has a sense of familiarity. Feels like a good start and I'm hard to discourage. While winning a writing contest can absolutely boost your author bio section of your query letter and potentially pique an agent's interest because to some degree it is validating that your story is resonating with readers, it is not by any means a necessity to getting a literary agent. And of course, there's no guarantee that if you win a writing contest, you are going to get a literary agent because of it. So I would consider these two things separate. If your manuscript is ready for querying, then go ahead and send out your queries. I wouldn't wait for the results of a writing contest before querying because you want to potentially use that in your bio. I don't think that's worth it for you. If you do enter a writing contest and then you win, which is awesome, then you can add that point to any future queries that you send out. But I wouldn't hold up on the querying process to wait for this writing contest because querying already takes a really long time and if you are ready, then I wouldn't delay that any further. As for your question regarding how to determine if a writing contest is legitimate or not, I understand how this can be tricky, especially if you aren't particularly familiar with all of the well-known or high-profile writing industry organizations that are out there. First things first, make sure you check out the website of whatever writing organization is sponsoring the contest. Are they a reputable, well-known writing organization? Do they have a physical presence in a specific region? Do they show what authors or books are associated with them? If it's lacking a lot of that information, then it might be a non-reputable writing contest and it might not be worth your time and money if they do charge a fee to submit. On the point of fees, if they are charging an exorbitant amount of money to review and consider your story or your manuscript excerpt, then that might be a little bit of a red flag. Again, I wouldn't throw a ton of money into writing contests, especially paid writing contests, in the hopes of this potentially getting you a literary agent. I would only pursue writing contests if you really feel compelled to do so because the organization is prestigious or the contest really resonates with your genre. Because at the end of the day, it's a nice to have when querying, but it is not essential. I hope you enjoyed the questions today and that my answers were helpful. If you like these sessions, please hit that thumbs up button to help my channel and these AMAs reach more viewers. Again, make sure you are subscribed and hit that red button if you aren't. Don't forget your free story self assessment worksheet in the description below and check out the link to my newsletter. Thanks so much for watching and happy writing.